Hello, welcome to this video on introducing logarithms. Yes, there are so many jokes I could say here, but I really, really won't because I'll get fired. Hold on a moment, I work for myself. Whole new discussion. My name's Darren from MathsGuru. Thank you very much for joining me. If this is the first time you have met me, great to see you. Thanks very much for joining me. If you can do me a massive favor, this is the needy bit. Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel, please? Um, so very few people, po so very few people watch maths content, and I have to say, I think my stuff's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> and if they do watch it, they tend not to subscribe. So subscribing just lets me know that you have watched it, and that makes me go cartwheels around my house, which is interesting because it's very small. I break things. Moving on. Uh, what are we doing today? There are my learning objectives. It's a brand new section to this part of the year 10 course, but logarithms are actually really important. If you're going to go on to do year 11 and 12 methods, logarithms, whoo, they are massive. They're everywhere. And so understanding the basics now is really, really important. Right. What's the learning objectives? I always show the learning objectives at the start. If you want to pause the video and have a look over, but let's move on. Right. Recap of past learning. The most important part to all of the work you're about to do, both on logarithms and polynomials, which is coming up a little bit later on, is be good at algebra. Now you're going to turn around and say, I'm no good at algebra. That's okay. I'm no good at quantum physics, but I'm fairly sure if I gave it a crack and I sat there and I didn't give up and I tried and I failed and I tried and I failed, this sounds like a moral, doesn't it really? Then you'll eventually get there. Failure is part of this course, right? Tripping up, because it shows what you didn't understand before or where your brain has basically confused itself. Trip up, ask someone for help. Send me an email, let me know, I will do what I can to help you, right? But the point of it is, practice really is gonna make it perfect. And the more you get this sus now, the better you're gonna be for year 11 and 12 or whatever year you're doing in your particular countries. Right, <clears throat> this content is algebra heavy. Let's make sure that we get our algebra sorted. What are logarithms? <sighs> Logarithms basically are a way of taking really, really big numbers and making them small. So for example, I, you know, I know that this video is probably primarily looking for people who are doing methods, but the general maths course here in Australia really does do logarithms really, really well. So I'm actually going to introduce it in the same way as I would if you were doing year 12 general maths. Imagine I've got these numbers here, yeah? I've got data items and I'm gonna try and put them on a, on a graph. For some reason, I was looking at cells and, and the growth. Whatever I was looking at, I had something in a Petri dish, yeah? Which just sounds gross. Why anyone would do that for a job? I've got no idea. Grow, watching things grow, bacteria. <laughs> Point of it is, on day one, let's say I started with only one cell. I've got no idea what I'm talking about. I wake up the next day, I do some counting, I've got 10 cells. The next day I've got 100, then 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. You can imagine that this could very quickly grow quite, quite large. If I was going to try and draw these numbers on a graph, yes, right, where we basically just looked at the cell numbers or we did it as a dot plot or whatever else, well, the number one would be here, wouldn't it? And the number 10 would be here. And the number 100 would be here, and the number 1000 would be here, and maybe the number 10,000 would be here, and maybe the number 100,000 would be here, and then we'd have low like, one, one million would be over here, and then that graph is next to useless. It doesn't show me any pattern, it doesn't show me anything, because sadly, a lot of my numbers are actually squidged to one side, right? So drawing that type of graph is useless. Wouldn't it be great if we could almost redefine a number system so that we can come along with an idea of, you know, making the scale more sensible. Let's make bigger numbers smaller, but let's leave the smaller numbers roughly where they are. And that's really what logarithms does. It takes big numbers and makes them small. Right, here we go. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna start redefining my number scale. So I'm gonna look and try and change color to, let's do black for a moment, right. I'm going to use powers of 10. I'm going to write, rewrite all of these numbers as a power of 10. So this one here would be 10 to the power of 1. This one here would be 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4, 10 to the power of 5, 10 to the power of 6, and so as it goes on. Now, using this as a pattern, we've gone 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It would make sense then that that would become 10 to the power of zero. 
Now I can define any number system I like. I can come up with, you know, the, the Darren maths guru and maths is, uh, number system if I wanted to, if I came up with some funky formula. But in this situation, what I'm now going to say is we're going to redefine the number system as base 10. Now what that means is that I'm now going to say for base 10, all of these numbers are going to have something to a power of 10. So I'm now going to say that 10 to the power of 0 is just going to be known as the number 0. 10 to the power of 1 is going to be known as the number 1. 10 to the power of 2, 2. 3, 4, 5, and 6. And notice what I've done. I've made really big numbers smaller. I'm actually now saying, let 1 million be represented by the number 6. Let 100,000 be represented by the number 5. Let 10,000 be represented by the number 4. And so we go on. So what I've done, big numbers and smaller. Now the way we express that, and I think I've got this on slide coming up, is we now say log base 10. All right, so log base 10 is basically saying we are thinking now of powers of 10. So log base 10 of 10 would be equal to 1. Why would it be equal to 1? Because 10 to the power of 1 is 10. So this 10 to the power of this number is this number in here. And that basically is, is massive. And we don't have to have log base just 10. You can have log base of any number you like. And later on, we're going to have log base E uh, when we get to year 12, 11 and 12 methods, but that's way beyond the scope of this course, right? So hopefully you realize that logarithms is just about taking numbers, big numbers, and making them smaller, all right? Or turning them into sort of a different representation. This notation here is massively important. Now, again, if you want to, all of these notes are available on mathsguru.com. Just download, uh, sort of head over there, sign up, easy to sign up, free to sign up. Download the notes right all over them while I'm doing this video, if that's what's useful to you, and I know a lot of people actually do. All right, let me go. It also works for smaller number two, all right? So again, what I tend to say is here, if that is 10 squared, and that is 10 to the power of one, and this is 10 to the power of zero, what would the number to the left of that be? Well, we're just taking one off the power each time. So that becomes 10 to the power of minus one, that becomes 10 to the power of minus two. So in that situation, we actually would say that here, that would be negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. All right, so again, the log base 10, so that means we're dealing with powers of 10 of 0 0.01 would equal negative two. Why? Because 10 to the power of negative two is 0 0.01. So again, being able to read this base, that's the power, that's my original or raw number. Massive, massive, massive. All right, so changing a raw number into a logarithm. There we go. That's for your summary notes. That's just pretty much what I've been explaining just a moment ago. All right, it's a way of writing or redefining a number system, making them bigger, squidging my graph, whatever you want to think about it is, yeah? So the important thing is here, that is the big number, that's the base number, that's the power, and that's my raw number, yeah? So 10... One, uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, 1,000 is 10 to the power of 3. Great thing is, we can use the CAS to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is going to fire up my TI Inspire. All right, for those of you using the class pad, I think the functionality is pretty similar. But again, if you look on your calculator here, we've got 10 to the power of X, which is this key I'm wobbling my mouse around now. But if I go log 10... All right now, if you don't put a number in this bottom box, can you see my, my cursor's there? If you don't put that number in there, it automatically defaults to number of 10. So life is good, you don't have to particularly worry about that. So if I do log of, what has it got, 10, one, two, three, and hit enter, it comes out as four. And you notice the calculator automatically filled in that 10 for me. Wow, making my life so, so much easier, he says hitting the microphone. But there we go. So your calculator can convert things backwards and forwards, and I'll come back to that in a little bit. Right, what about if I want to go from log base 10 to normal? What about if I've got that power and then I want to go back? Well, again, much of this is about being able to read this properly. That is my 10, right? So that is my base number. So I can automatically write that as 10. I know this number here is my power to the power of five equals whatever that one is there, x. Oh, okay, well, there we go. That makes life a lot, lot easier. Let's do that. So we do 10 to the power of five, hit enter. And what do we get there? We get 100,000. So 100,000. 
In fact, he says, writing this, trying to rub that out. That's exactly what we got here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's a mistake there. So what I'm actually going to do is beautifully correct that by putting a zero in there. And no one's going to know any of the difference. <laughs> I was writing these late last night, sorry. Right, okay, so reading this, converting backwards and forwards is a skill that you're going to need. Right, using algebra. Now, this course is algebra based. And as you get to year 11 and 12, way more algebra is going to be needed. So we've got to be comfortable with the general idea of now using letters. So what we need to know now is this A is my base number, X is my power, and Y is my raw number. So we can now convert anything of this format here to look like this format here. So again, remember this A was my base number. So the power, base number. Raw number, that was that one there, is equal to x. Yeah, put that in your summary book, write about it in your own words, whatever else. So write an equivalent statement to the following. So basically they're just turning around saying, well, if I've got here a log statement, let's write it back in my normal way. So we now know then that that there, <clears throat> so for part a, if we've got log of 10 of 1000, is equal to three, then we know that this is written as 10 to the power of three is equal to a thousand. Yes, all they're really asking me to do is take this bottom base, write it there, that was my power, <coughs> 1000, 1000. What do we do the other way around? Can we do it the other way around? Two to the power of five equals 32. So what is my base here? So, ah, interesting, we're not doing log 10. So base of two, log to the two of, 32 is equal to my power of 5. Love, 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 love. Yeah, and again, practice is going to make perfect. Right, evaluate logarithms. Evaluate the following logarithms. Log 2, 8. Right, <clears throat> so log base 2 of 8 is equal to. So let's do that as an x because that's what I'm trying to find. So we now know 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. Writing that out makes life a little bit easier. So two times how many times itself is going to be eight? Two, four, eight. So in that situation, x would be equal to three. ka -ching. there we go. What about log five of 625? We're going to write that equal to x. So we now know my power is five to the power of x. Sorry, my base number is five to the power of x is 625. Five times itself, how many times are you going to give that? So five, 25, 125, 625, it's going to give me 4. So x is equal to 4. ka -ching. Evaluate the following. Hmm. Log 3 of 1 ninth. Okay. So 3. So let's just write that out again. <clears throat> so let's do that. We're going to log 3 of 1 over 9 is equal to x. So x. Let's try that one again. So 3 to the power of x is one on nine, sheesh. Well, I know that one on nine can be written as nine to the power of minus one. Three to the power of x, well nine can be written as three squared to the minus one. And I remember from my index rules that I can multiply those two together to give me three to the power of x is equal three to the minus two. Ah, oh, so in which case x there is minus two. That's certainly one way of doing it. Lots and lots of different ways of doing it. Log to the 10 of 0 0.001. Let's have a look at that one here. So log 10 0 0.001 is equal to x. Well, again, another way of doing this is to go back to saying, well, <clears throat> if one is uh, zero, 0 0.1 is minus one, da, 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 and we could go through that way, or I'm just going to do it this way. So 10 to the power of x is 0.001. Whew. So that is going to give me 10 to the power of x is 1 over 1,000. So 10 to the power of x is 1,000 <coughs> uh, to the minus 1. Uh, 10 to the power of x is equal to 10 cubed to the minus 1. And that gives me that 10 to the power of x is 10 to the minus 3, 
or x is equal to minus 3. Now again, can we use our calculator to do that? Of course we can, because part c of my question is asking me to do just that. So let's fire up my calculator, and what are we going to do? Well, basically, just type it in. So I'm going to go control log, put my base in. It already is base 10 of 7. Hit enter, and hold on a moment. I didn't work, do what I was expecting it to do. Nope, because my calculator is in exact mode. So what I'm going to do is click on here. I'm going to go settings and status, document settings, and where it says calculation mode, I'm going to put in an approximate. Now that will give me answers all in decimals. Not always the best thing to do on a calculator, but for now, we'll just go with it. So in which case, log of 10, log base 10 of 7 gives me, and what do we want it to correct? Three decimal places, 0.845. So 0.845, and what about this one? Log 10 of 0.5. So let's go control log 10, 0.5 gives me minus 0.301. So minus 0.301. So that's giving you a general indication of how to do this using the calculator and whatever else. And again, practice makes perfect. It's algebra, I get it. You'll make mistakes, I get it. Minus signs will go all over the place, I get it. But the more you do, the better you're going to get, I promise. Find the value of x in each of these equations. Ooh, log 4 of 64 is equal to x. So we now know 4 to the power of x is 64. 4 times itself. How many times is it going to give me 64? 4, 16, 64, 3. Yep, I'm using my fingers. That's what I was giving them for, to count. What about this one? Log 2 of x equals 6. So 2 to the power of 6 is equal to x. Notice they've just moved the value of x. So 2 to the power of 6 is equal to x. So x would be equal to 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. There we go. ka -ching. Can I check with my calculator? That's what it's there for. I like checking with my calculator. It makes life a lot, lot easier. So let's do log, control, log, 4 of 64, I've got to put that 4 in this time because my base is 4, it gives me 3, and then now that one there I've got to solve, because I'm going to do, so and then I'm going to go menu, algebra, solve, because they've given me an equation and I'm trying to find that value of x is given to me, so oops, <clears throat> let's do my log, control, log 2 of x equals 6, and I have to put comma x because I'm turning the calculator, I want to work out what x is, and x comes out to be 64. And believe it or not, he says, going large, going large, go large or go home. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. If you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be great. Thanks very much. Again, the content is there on mathsguru.com for you to download. There are more videos in this series coming, I promise you, because I've recorded them all and I will be uploading them soon. Take care, stay safe. Hopefully I'll see you again. Bye-bye.